give me a test for me. Check, check, one, two. All okay, that sounds good. Cool, cool. thanks, Brandon. What's up everybody and welcome to another video. In the last video we took a look at MachineWise's shop here in Arizona and now we're taking a look at the relatively complicated <laughs> product lineup. But also I want to get into the history of these products because sure we are now in a very beautiful final days but uh, it didn't it didn't necessarily start out that way now did it? Yeah oh, so we're gonna go final days. Yeah yeah <laughs> there's only like a, like a week or two left I'm gonna be totally honest. <laughs> I've seen this place. I, dude, I'm expiring real fast. <laughs> you started from relatively humble beginnings, but you came yes. to the point where you literally manufacture what is currently my favorite Bala song ever. So I want to dig in with this video. How did you go on this journey from very humble beginnings to really impressive, really incredible products where you are now? Do we want to start with the special boy? So uh, contextually, everybody, Dalen has told me and Brandon that there is something that we need to see but are not allowed to see yet, which I'm utterly terrified and excited for. And apparently this precedes the Delta IV. Yes, it was literally the first thing I ever made on my first mill before I realized I was gonna become a ballast on Where company. is your first mill, Dalen? It is to your left. Right there, with my coffee next to it. <laughs> Delicious coffee. <laughs> Delicious coffee. This is this is unscripted now, and it's dark <laughs> over here. So I'm bringing Dalen into the darkness. Sorry, everybody, for how bad this looks. Oh, Brandon, you're so Aww. smart. This machine, Dalen, yes. is very different. It is significantly different. The, All of these. Spiritually, it is the same. It's just slower and less accurate and less everything. And and how many of the ballast songs did you make on this? Oh, goodness, easily 150 to 200, probably, if not more. Just a. Casual 150 to 200. Should I show you how the tool changes in it? Yeah, um, yeah, why not? Uh, so <laughs> big machines have an automatic tool changey bit that like takes the next thing and puts it into the slot. This is our tool changer, our automatic tool yes. changer for this one. I am the automatic tool changer. Yeah, so what did you have to do when you made yeah. the first 150 of your products? Yeah, so I would have various tool holders in a much more organized position at that time. Just come up here, loosen the drawbar, Give it a whack, throw in your next tool, and then retighten everything down. Close it and then rinse and repeat about 15 times per product. How often did you have to do that process? A oh, minimum every five minutes all day. How many ballast songs could you make at a time on this product? At a time, like like on the table? Uh-huh. About two to three handles at best, single handles, and then like two to three single blades at a time. <laughs> Really not a high volume there. No. So things have gotten a little bit more efficient. <laughs> so let's let's a, let's attend yes. back to the table. Yes. Sorry to totally throw off your entire groove, Brandon. My my poor camera guy spent so long making everything beautiful, and then I just it's okay. Let's make, it let me get a close him. up here. Open, uh, show me oh, your we're, teeth. We're really entering. <laughs> <laughs> show me your teeth, and then we just like yellow them as much as possible. Oh. <laughs> my witch teeth. <laughs> This is gonna be a very chaotic <laughs> video. <laughs> you had a very manual process originally. Yes. So that means that this thing that I don't know what it is, but we're about to find out was like, that was the first. It was the first thing I ever made on that. And I only made this because I just wanted a ballast song. I had no intentions of selling them or continuing. I'm sorry. So you made this product. Did you not want to buy a ballast song? Let me give you a better look into that point of my life, right? Okay. We just spent all the money we had on a year's worth of rent up front to get a house because of COVID. And then I spent the remaining of it on that machine. It was, I have nothing else to do at this very current moment. I don't know what I'm doing with my life other than I'm doing something on this machine. And my roommate just unboxed a ballast song. So I want one. And I'm gonna make it. And it was terrible. Well, we'll be the judge of that. Dalen, go ahead and crack out whatever this is. Uh, it doesn't even want to come out of it's been hidden. In, it's been hidden in his pocket the entire time. I haven't been allowed to see this yet. So it's the first eight. thing I want you to do on this, once you've familiarized yourself, is chaplain with it. I challenge oh, you. God. Okay. There you go. Oh, goodness me. Oh, goodness me. Oh, goodness It would actually have more play, but it just physically can't. 
It has um, flathead screws. Yes. Every single thing there was made on that machine, down to the bushings, washers, hardware, everything. And it's a floating bushing system. <laughs> that blade is like low carbon steel. It's, it's not even a blade. I can't tell from the rust on it. Mm -hmm. I would never have known. No. Other than the gorgeous patina of this uh, incredible product. It takes years to get that finish. Wow, like a fine wine. Oh yes. This is so blade heavy. It's only blade. It is only blade. There is like nothing. Ooh. I can't fan it. I can't fan it. I can't. It doesn't, it just doesn't fan. It just. No, no, no. Yo, oh, I want no, you to I, come no, in give, here. Give oh, me the I, camera. I, I, Everybody so in the fan. Oh, wow. Yeah. You literally can. Oh, my fucking fuck. Yeah, that is actually impossible. What do you think, Brandon? Actually, yeah. Uh, welcome to the Machine Wise uh, product line. Explain where we spend the first twelve minutes just talking about just this. One thing I really love about it is the design, where the Zen pins just don't work when it's closed. Yeah, it's great. Like how right? they just it just. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. They are purely just a uh, decorative suggestion. Option. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try to chaplain it now. Oh please! You told me to attempt. This is gonna be the best thing ever. Is it? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm actually impressed. <laughs> Is it really that bad? Okay, I'm gonna have you, I want you to, now I want you. <laughs> <laughs> you like how you have to really just. You have to like, the handle offers no resistance Zero. whatsoever. <laughs> All right, Brandon. You try to chaplain the, the knife. <laughs> See? Whoa! I'm no, impressed. No, no, that that was a fluke. Wait, here we go, here we go, here we go. I can feel it. It wants Brandon to is amazing. It wants to go. It really <laughs> I'm really having to really I'm playing a dangerous game. I'm Ray Bradbury playing the most dangerous game. Okay, wait, vertical. <laughs> no. Okay, it was that bad. You doubted me. <laughs> Mm. Wow, Dalen, thank you for this. Is the end of that sentence. Uh, okay, cool. Um, what was that called? It didn't have a name. Mm hmm. Yep. But, like, pick. <laughs> so, if I had to just go off my lineage in the past, this would be the Delta 3. Oh. Or just the Delta. So, the de will. so I have wondered that because we have the Delta 4. Yeah. And then the Delta. That's just the 15 of Delta. The because that. <laughs> So there was no Delta One, is what I'm learning. It just started. It was kind Delta of that. Three. My naming conventions in the past were not very great, and maybe they're getting a little bit better. But I'm not historically well known for names. I wonder why we're doing a product line explained video right now. <laughs> the Delta Four was the fourth iteration of knives after this. After so this that. is kind of like Alpha, if you will. So I guess we're onto the Delta Four now, by the way. Yeah. Delta Four. So we're, it wasn't just. Okay, cool. Yeah, it, there were several there iterations in between. In between. Yep. Great. Yep. So what I find really interesting, there is a design language that you did manage to kind yes. of carve out. And so I find that really interesting that that does in fact start at the oldest point. Like it does. there are things that then got brought along all the way to where we are yep. now. Is this on bushings? No. So the, all the Delta fours were on bearings. This one only has two of the four bearings though. At this point in the process, were you assuming that you were going to be making a product that was designed for sale? Okay. So this one, I made a MachineWise Instagram account. You know, I was just going to do machining content there and then start trying to maybe pick up some some like job shop style work. So I just posted this up for fun and it like immediately gained traction. Turns out there is a massive community around it and I just started looking up Balasong content on YouTube and you guys are the first people to pop up. Bam. I forget if it was the collection video, the Monarch video, or the Fior video. I mean, I watched all of them at that point, and I was like, holy crap, their production quality is insane. This must be a bigger community than I thought. <laughs> As I was redesigning this, trying to make it better, I would often refer to like your Fior, your Atropos, and I think your Monarch video to sure. try to figure out what makes a design good and what makes something flippable because mm -hmm. I was not a flipper before this. So you didn't have any like hands-on experience Zero. with any ballast songs at the time? I didn't even touch any other company's products until right before the Marin 
was made. Wow. So I only had my ecosystem to go off of and what my like like what the community was telling me about my products. I think we can move on from here to yep. the Delta 15. Yes. Uh, which is next up in the lineup. Yep. When we got to this point, one of the things that I brought up in our review of it mm -hmm. is that this is very unique. Like there was not another Balasong right. that I could think of that looked like this, much right. less functioned like this. Yes. There was a lot of uniqueness to what you were doing because you were coming at this, I mean, literally with a different perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like basically no perspective, honestly. <laughs> yeah, this is a chunky chungus. It's, like, a, it's a chunky boy. Like these are massive and yes. you got a little bit more refined since oh, oh yes. But they all have a pretty long length compared to yes. other Balasongs Yes, they do. So Why is that? That is because I was not a flipper. I did not know anything about what makes a good ballast song in terms of the flipping, the balance, anything like that. I went online and I looked up like popular ballast songs for flipping. And a lot of them would have like, you know, length dimensions. That way I could get some kind of baseline to figure out, you know, what's too long, what's too short, yada, yada. Sure. Handles often came out to end up being like five and a half inches long. But my, my weird machinist brain, whenever I measure something from like, a radius like this or a half circle. I like to measure it from the center to the end, which is not how it's supposed to be measured. It's just overall length. So when I see, when ah. I hear five and a half inches handle length, I think from the center of the pivot to the end of the handle. And that's so like, you inherently that's the usable section. Like an extra quarter, like quarter inch. inch. Yeah. And then I learned how to flip on my products and then that's my preference. That's how my preference came to be. And, and as it turns out, people really do enjoy that. So it was a positive thing in the long run. And that's why it's continued to this day. That's pretty cool. It's funny too. So the four is even chunkier. Yeah, it's got like a big round. Big old butter. chunky. And so this was my attempt at making it a slim ballast song. This was a slim ballast song in my eyes <laughs> at the time. Cause I just had nothing else to compare it to. Yeah. And I never flipped anything else. So this just felt relative to that so much thinner. And it was. It, <laughs> it was. But boy, is it still chunky. A lot of it was just what I thought visually looked <laughs> Correct. Uh huh. <laughs> so I definitely just had a chonky mentality, I guess, at the sure. time. Sure. We can all appreciate a chonky mentality, I think. <laughs> My anaconda. Okay, so yeah, this is very early stages, but still yes. pretty solid. It is a entirely functional flipper. Like yeah. everything about it did work. You can do every trick on this thing and it's way lighter than it looks. It is. Uh, when I saw pictures of this, I was like, no way. <laughs> That's like a brick. From here, we're moving straight on to the Marin. Yeah, what it was, was from the, that to the Marin. Th that's a very big change. Oh, it was a massive change. I was very fortunate, someone very kind, I don't wanna say their name just in case, but uh -huh. they are moderately well known. Someone kind came to me and asked me to make prototypes for him. After making it and assembling one and flipping it, I went, oh my God. This is what a Balasong designed for flipping is like. Because you it was still finally, hadn't. I hadn't until then. It, so that Whoa. was finally my introduction to a proper competitive flipper. So this is like literally your like your come to Jesus moment. Yes, holding that product after I machined it for him and like getting to flip it. You got like ripped out of the matrix in that yes, moment. Yes, I did. Yes, I was like, oh my God, everything I make is not like this. What I find really interesting here is that you still managed to keep the design elements alive. I did, yes. There is a through line of design from this balisong to this balisong. Right. And I think that's really neat. Is this the one from our video? That is literally the one from your video, yes. This is literally the That is the, the first Thai Marin. It was really impressive. It was one of the things that kind of blew my mind at the time. I think this is a great, moment for you. And this also, you brought up the Marin platform. Correct. What does that mean from here yes. on out? So basically from the Marin onwards, all of my designs were based around, I guess, interchangeability. And so like whenever I wanted to kind of play around with something new and I would make a prototype, it was easiest to put it on the Marin platform because yeah. I already had everything dialed in for that. You know, I make that prototype and it ends up becoming the Slift T because it was actually good. <laughs> the interchangeability across your product range is really, really interesting to me. Like. This blade could fit on this knife. It would, yes. And vice versa. Yes. Does this blade have a different weight profile than this Yeah, one? so the Slift T blades are a bit lighter than everything else we make. I try to keep all the other blades and trainers within a pretty close range of each other, but the Slift T blade in particular is a little bit less. But I like that ability to change Yeah, it gives that. you more handle weight if you want it. Just the other day, we yes. got to visit one of our friends uh, from our Patreon. By the way, if you want to support us on Patreon, it's only three bucks a month. Get access to the private community Discord and videos like these 
days in advance. Dalen is one of our wonderful patrons. Thanks, Dalen. Of course. You're lovely. But we got to visit one of our other local patrons uh, the other day, Malv, who has a number of your products yes. that have been kind of switched around. And I got to try the Slift T Blade on a Prisma. Yes. And I really liked it. It's pretty good. I was really shocked. <laughs> I do by enjoy that. it. Yep. I, I actually think I might have liked it more than mm -hmm. the stock Prisma. And yes. I just like that accessibility and that right. ability to play around with your products that you yep. very, th this is intentional. It is. It is. We go from the Marin. Yep. We're on to the Slift T. What happened here? Like, what brought you to this as the next product? Right. Honestly, I was just kind of bored one day. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I think a lot of things happen that way. <laughs> yes. One time I was bored because uh, there was a pandemic happening and yeah. I didn't have any film jobs. Right. And I made a YouTube video. Yep. Yep. You know. Historically, I'm, I'm very well known by the people who are around me. I go on these really weird extended hour work binges. So like the Marin is a great example. Yeah. The Marin went from a concept in my brain to a finished knife in my hand in less than 24 hours straight. I started designing it in, in software in Fusion 360 at 7 p.m. on a Friday night. And I believe I posted that video with it in my hands on my Instagram in my backyard at like before 11 a.m. the next day. Oh my God. I would say that that's, that's weird in any way, but honestly, it's weirdly relatable. When I made the first yeah. video on our channel, yeah. the, the My Balasong Collection 2018 video, that was just me. Yeah. I had, I was like, I'm bored mm -hmm. and I want to make a video. I have the equipment, yeah. I have the knowledge, I'm just yes. going to do it. And I literally made that video yeah. in one 24 hour yes. period. Yep. I had the idea the morning of that day yep. and then I worked. The reason the B-roll is at night, because I went to my roommate, who at the time was Austin. Y'all remember Austin? Play clip of Austin getting shot in the head. I was like, hey, can I go shoot B-roll with you? Help me. And so he just held the camera and we went to like a storefront in the middle of the night yes. and did the B-roll yep. to this video. And yep. I edited it overnight, mm -hmm. uploaded it, and it went live the next yep. morning. 24 hours later, I didn't yes. sleep. So I can relate heavily yes. to that process yes. because I, I feel like a lot of things that you're passionate about that you don't think will go anywhere right. end up happening that yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So that's that's kind of the story of all of the products. The Marin in particular was the fastest turnaround. So when it came to making the Slift Tee, yes. was, was it intentional that you were trying to make a sort of spiritual successor to the 50? When I went to the Marin, they were becoming available, but there were a lot of people who still had 50s on order or they wanted a 50 still. And after making the Marin, I, I, I realized that I really don't want the 50 around anymore. I was like, okay, let's let's work on a slim version of the 50 to satiate the want for a 50 and make it, you know, better. And so I guess that was the necessity or the the role that the Slift T filled. I hopped onto it when I got bored one day and then, and then I did the same thing as the Marin. I started designing it and I had the prototype in my hand the following day after a long fever dream shift. It's obviously takes a lot of design cues, right. including the blade. It's really interesting how you've managed yeah. to keep a adjacent blade profile, but yep. it's obviously much more grown up. Like there is a yes. lot more happening in this Absolutely. blade. Absolutely. I wanted to challenge myself on a weird blade design because I wasn't very good at designing blades at the time. So I, I just wanted to have fun with it and see what I could do. Honestly, I think this blade design is gorgeous. Thank so you. I, I think you nailed it. Thanks. All right, so moving on from the Slift T, we have this one. Now, is this still a Slift T? Yeah, it's a Slift T just, just with a Prisma blade on it. And the Prisma blade is literally a Marin blade. It was the model of the Marin blade, but it was just trainer-fied. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. It is the Marin Blade profile, and then I spent a lot of time trying to make it the same weight and the same center of gravity as the Live Blade. That's why the pockets are how they are. Wow. It I... wasn't necessarily an aesthetic decision. It was, how do I make it as close to the Live Blade as I could? I somehow never noticed that. Oh, really? Yeah, that's oh. actually really cool. I had yeah. no idea. It's just, everything's rounder because trainer. It is. Yeah, it's straight up the Marin Blade profile. Wow, I had no idea. That's super <laughs> cool. Yeah. I will also say the, uh, the trainer blade flips really nicely on these hands. Handles, it does, so. yes. Next up, we yes. are in serif territory. Yes, we are. This is this is really cool. This is the knife that blew my mind when you sent it to me. This is the my actual personal one. Yep. And you can see our review of it right there because this is, for me, one of the most important knives in your lineup mm -hmm. to this point. Yes. This 
in my opinion, is really where you graduated to someone that is really respected in the space. Right. Now you've got a Chanwich design right. that's not skeletonized. Yep. How did that happen? Yes, so one of the things with the Seraph was it was in development the longest out of any of my products. It was like a, almost a five or six month development time over the course of I think three or four different prototypes, one of which is actually on the machine back there. I got to see this the other like, day. I think Proto 2, Proto 1, one of the Protos. Wow. Yeah. And so with the Seraph, Chanwich was something that seemed kind of new. I don't know if it really was new at that time, but it was new to me and it really intrigued me. I had always wanted to do a no hole pattern handle. I thought it would sound really good. I thought it would feel really rigid and, and, and stiff. But yeah, this was just my attempt at really just going balls to the walls, I guess. I didn't utilize the Marin platform at all, which is also why that the original Serifs don't fit the Marin platform. Aha! Uh -huh. Once I made one of these, I, I I was convinced that I wouldn't be making anything else because I really liked it. I, me too. <laughs> and I was like, cool, okay, I don't need to worry about the Marin platform anymore because I'm only going to make the Serif, which <laughs> that sure worked out well, didn't it? <laughs> I genuinely was just so blown away when I, when this arrived at my doorstep. I think I literally <laughs> sent you a video. You scared the shit out of me. I was about to get in the shower <laughs> and I get a DM from you saying, dude, what the fuck? And that's it. I'm like, great, cool. I'm not showering yet apparently because I'm probably fucked. He hates the serif. I'm screwed. <laughs> And then what did I send you after that? Something along the lines of, this is the best ballad song I've ever flipped and I damn near fucking fainted. <laughs> I like got the little box. It had the 3D printed thing and yep. everything like that. And yep. so I was like, oh, this is neat. Unbox it. I'm like, oh, wow. That's pretty. Yep. That's really cool. I take it out of the box. I'm just like, <laughs> like immediately. Yeah. Like the mo, just, just the, the, <laughs> it activated something in my monkey brain <laughs> that was like, this is not normal. Has sound been something? Because you said this is your favorite sounding one so it is. far. Yeah, sound is important to me a lot, actually. Okay. So I do try to design around good, good, clacky, pleasant noise. I don't know, yeah. You, you want an acoustic to it. Yes, exactly. Because yep. I, I had tried a fair number of ballast songs up to that point, just and I had yet to hear one that just like sounded like it was machined really well. <laughs> And I don't know how to put it any other way. <laughs> yeah, so part of our tuning process, funny enough, is the ice pick sound test. We do it because it really does, you can feel any tightness in it. I need to learn to do that for our videos. <laughs> <laughs> you you went from this yeah. to, in my opinion, currently my favorite ballad song with my favorite sound. Yes. That's crazy. <laughs> This is insane. <laughs> like, look at this. Look at the, look at that. What happened? Good job. Thank you. <laughs> now, moving on from the Serif, we have the Prisma. So yes. uh, I think that'll be the next thing we talk about. How yep. you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. I think I need to take a quick drink though. Okay. Cool. Be right back. That is uh, milk? No, no, this is actually the, the machine coolant. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so next up after the Serif, we have the Prisma. Yes. Yeah, all of it is, funny enough, different than the Marin Light, even if it is a direct successor to it. So yes. what was your like design process here? I also really do want to have a product that is much more affordable and moderately easy to obtain, especially these days. The goal was to keep them as functional as possible, but also as cheap to manufacture as possible. Yep. If we had a flat face on it, it could be machined a lot faster. And then I still wanted to do some kind of surfacing, some kind of my flair of, of visuals to it. So like all of our products have a lot of surfacing on it, all the fun three axis contours. Sure. But yeah, it's the same three hole pattern that's on, you know, the Serifs and the Slift Tees. And the biggest difference on these was we swapped up how we make all of our channel handles now, actually. And we use what's called a keyway cutter and it allows us to do this channel in the handles while it's held down while it machines the first side. Fully machine one side and the channel and then it just gets flipped over and then the second side so it's much faster and it also is funny enough way more accurate so. From here we've got a really interesting product that I actually haven't had a lot of time with. Yes. This is the Opus? It is the Opus. This is a really exciting product because this is the spiritual successor to this. It is. I created the Opus to solve a problem I was having internally mm -hmm. and that was I wasn't happy with a couple small features on the Serif that was starting to plague us on production and it really all boils down to why the Opus has chamfers versus 
the radiuses on the Seraph. Oh, interesting. Yep. And so this was intended to be a Seraph V2, much to, I think, everyone's dismay. I remember hearing that there was a chance that this was going to replace my beloved Seraph, and I was like, hey, yes. Dalen. Yes. Uh, yep. Love that, what you're doing. Please don't. That idea was quickly shot down basically wholeheartedly, which I'm very glad happened in the long run. I absolutely adore the Seraph and the Opus. They're both interchangeable for me in terms of what I want to flip that day. I wanted to kind of get away from the Seraph and have whole patterns, a fresh blade. And this is by far my favorite blade that we've done. The blade reminds me a little bit of the original Marin blade, but it yes. is unique and its own thing. Like it's kind of got a bit of a hollow grind it does, to yep. it. Yep. And stylistically, I think it matches the handles just as well as the original Seraph blade yes. matches its own handles. Right. It is on par with the Seraph in terms of flippability, mm -hmm. in terms of build quality, in terms of everything. It is a fantastic ballast song that I would say Thank is you. at the top of your process. Thank you, appreciate it. I like and appreciate that you take that community feedback and when people tell you, <laughs> hey, Dalen, please don't replace this. <laughs> yes. You listen. I do. The feel, the, yes. the machining, the perfection that's in this one, it's the same as the Seraph. They're just as high quality as one another. But what gets me is that the actual flipping the actual experience of flipping it is so different that yes. it makes me want to have both. Moving on from the Opus, what have we got next? Yeah, so from here, technically these the Slift TV 2s came after the Opus. Was the Slift T discontinued in between there? The Slift T was never in production properly to begin with. Oh. I did like maybe 50 Slift TV 1s. Oh wow, so that's like really rare. It is. Because yes. now I know the Slift T is really well liked it's the, by a lot of it's people. It's the very hot item right now. Seraphs are also gonna be the very hot item, but. Honestly, right now, my <laughs> Be the ballast song that I want the most Ooh, awesome, okay. in terms of yep. like something that's not in my collection that right. I think would add something new to my collection. Yep. That's right! The Slift TV2 is the new hot item that all the flippers can't stop talking about. This incredible upgrade to the 5T includes new, slimmer handles and unbeatable flipping performance. The improved blade milling will send a chilling sensation down to your bones as you flip this thing to the moon and beyond. The Slift TV2 is not intended as a transportation device and will not bring you to the moon. To order your own Slift TV2, click the link in the description or visit https slash machinewise.wilhirsch.gay for a discount off the total purchase price. No purchase necessary to enter unless you want to purchase the product, in which case purchase is necessary. Once again, for a discount off the total price of this incredible flipper or any other MachineWise product, click the link below or visit https forward slash machinewise.wilhirsch.gay. That's https forward slash machinewise.wilhirsch.gay. The new Serifs are on the Marin platforms. No one would be able to tell until they put an original Serif blade on and found out that it don't do the thing. Uh -huh. So if I tried to take my old blade and attach it to this It would have handle slap one way and the gap would be like a T the other. Oh no. <laughs> The goal is to have complete new serifs that wow. will look identical to the old ones. They're just on the Marin platform. It'll be a mainstay. It's okay. not going anywhere. I'm really happy to see that you can interchange things now because honestly, the Opus blade on the serif is really good. It's my personal favorite. Opus blade, serif handles, no weights all day. So this next one. This one is the updated serif handles just with a Prisma blade on it. Okay. So again, just kind of showing off the modularity, I suppose. I think it looks super good though. And I really, really like that you support right. the modability of your ballast on yes, I like I do. you have that mindset of yes. like people will want to change stuff. Exactly. We should enable that. Yes. And also just the fact that people who really want a serif that live in other countries where they're illegal, they can still get one now. Oh. And it'll flip similarly. I you no, know, this is not this is not very different. Let's do a little bit of AS ASMR real quick. Oh god. Oh no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, it's all good. It's mine now. Oh no. <laughs> Brandon, what are you doing? Come back! We have to sell this product later. It's already been sold, actually. Oh. Whoever's this is, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was Wait. sold as a blend, it's okay. Okay, well, this is the fun part, though. Also, our floors Let's are- look for any problems with it, because here's the thing. Yep. There probably aren't any. Yeah, I know. Here I am covering my ass for dropping it. <laughs> um, something that I do really love about the Opus and Serif platforms yep. is that uh, because they're full titanium construction, they are shockingly durable. Yes. Like, this is Dalen's Personal original. First? original. That is a first production intent serif. Like, you know, it's, it's got the rounded off tip and it's got the crunchified bits, but like mine, which yeah. was produced around the same time, yeah. I have not treated this thing well. Obviously, Dalen has. The reason it's tipped so much is because I literally used it as a pry bar to pry parts out of my fixtures. So oh. I, I literally cracked the tip off of it like six times. Oh! And then it didn't have a tip anymore, so I had to regrind a tip so I could use it as a pry bar again. It's a, vicious, oh. it's a vicious cycle. 
I have not been kind to this thing. No. And it looks. It looks great. Almost new. I have not babied it right. whatsoever. Yeah. You have built a very durable, good platform that really does, like I, yeah, I sure literally just dropped this straight onto concrete and I actually can't <laughs> tell where it hit the ground. Like I genuinely, can you no, find the spot? I, I don't think I'll be able to find it, honestly. Anywho, finally at the end of our journey here, we yep. come to this. Yes. This is very new to us. It is we, extremely new. We literally just found out about this, I think two days ago now, as yeah. we were arriving here. It's because I finished it when you landed. Oh my God. This is... The Prisma V2. Ooh. Yes. And so this harkens back heavily to the Marin and Marin Light. Yep. And so I wanted to finally do some rounding on the Prisma handles to kind of refresh them. We've done quite a lot of volume in Prisma, so it's just time. And I decided I wanted to harken back to the Marin Light handles, but I wanted to do it in a way that's a little more modern machine-wise with more surfacing in it. I haven't gotten to flip this much yet. This is really good. Right? Wow, this is yeah. super good. This does feel like a real improvement on the original Prisma. Yes. I think this feels like a Prisma if it matured and turned into right. an even better, more dynamic yes. product. Yeah. That, that rounding is good. I really like flipping this thing. It is absolutely fire. Oh, oh Jesus shit. Fire, I hardly know. How do you feel about your current product lineup? My current product lineup, I am very happy with. I also like that throughout this journey, it's very obvious that you have included community feedback in the design Heavily, yes. and evolution of your products. Mm -hmm. Almost any time someone has a criticism, be it positive, negative, or constructive, it's in my head when I'm designing something. What is currently available is everything that is here. So the original Prisma, the Prisma V2, Slift T Trainer, Slift T Live Blade, the Opus, and then the updated Serif Blade that matches with the Marin Platform Serif handle. So at that point, you could literally take the Serif Blade and put it on... Yes, and then the Serif anything. Blade could go on anything you want as well. That's so cool. Yeah. Awesome. So hopefully this gives you guys a little bit better of an idea of what is currently available from MachineWise and where we started, right. whereas to where we are now. <laughs> with your products that are currently available, the naming scheme has got a little bit weird. I've heard people oh, yes. call uh, the, the Slift T with the Opus blade the Slopus. The Slopus, uh, yeah. Um, I've heard... The Seropus. Uh, the Seropus. The, yep. uh, Propus is a good one, too. Oh, God. To help differentiate but not have weird, silly sounding conglomerations of syllables, we'll name everything based off of the handle that it's on. Okay and then we'll just use the first letter of the blade. So this would be the Slift T P. Okay, so the Slift dash T, P. like dash P, gotcha. Yep. So then we're talking like, that'd be the Serif dash O. Correct, yep. Ah. yep. And if it's just its original blade, it's just the Serif, the Opus, the, serif, the Slift the opus. T. Gotcha. It's simple and it helps differentiate what they are. Thank you so much, Dalen. This has been really informative. Yes. <laughs> I really enjoyed getting to learn about everything that you started with, even this guy. This was honestly a treat. Thank you for showing this of to course. me. Of course, it's definitely my embarrassing past. It's an embarrassing past, but at the same time, I think there is something really special to this. The fact that it exists and the mm -hmm. fact that it has led yes. to such an interesting and varied collection right. that you guys Guys have yep. so thank you so much for this uh, also a huge thank you to our wonderful patrons uh dalen being one of them you'll actually see his name <laughs> yeah. in the patreon credits so thank you guys so much patreon starts at just three bucks a month and happens to be the best way to support us uh, we've had a little bit of trouble recently in terms of being consistent with you know uh, money things so having our patreon is extremely nice and you guys do an amazing job in supporting us if you wanted to join it's three bucks a month you get access to the private community Discord as well as videos like these days in advance of everybody else, which means that you get to comment on it before anybody else. And then everybody on YouTube's like, why are there comments from three days ago? That doesn't make any sense. Confuse a person today for only $3 at patreon.com slash the Will Hirsch. But that's pretty much it for the moment. Now, if you'll excuse me, this has been a uh, pretty long, arduous process for this video. So uh, I, I think we need a group hug. Yeah, I definitely need that. Come on, Dalen. Oh, oh, thank you, man. This has been really awesome. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for coming out. Absolutely. Anything.